Prabhupada came in December, he did perform a wedding ceremony for Jivananda and Harsharani. And I was there for that. And my, I think my brother got initiated at that time also. <clears throat> and um, some, some devotee said to me, um, why don't, you know, why don't I get initiated? And I, you know, I thought, well, I'm not qualified, you know, I'm just, that's only for very high, elevated, that's a very special thing. And he said, no, just ask Prabhupada. <clears throat> At that time, we called him Swamiji. So one day after the lecture, I raised my hand and I said, Swamiji, um, can I get initiated? And he looked at me and he said, will you follow the four principles? I said, yes. So then he nodded his head, okay. At that time, four other people shot up their hands and they said, can I get initiated? Can I get initiated? And Prabhupada said yes to all of them. So um, it was shortly after that that, um, see, my brother Krishnadas told me I should go up to Prabhupada's room, which was down the street on Willard. <clears throat> so I went up there one evening and um, I spoke to Prabhupada. I said, um, Swamiji, my brother Krishnadas tells me that you um, came back in this life because in your past life you killed a snake. So Prabhupada said, oh, your brother has told you that? And I said, yes. And that's, you know, that was what I said to him. I didn't know, I didn't think of anything else to say to him. One time we were in Prabhupada's room and um, uh, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday we would have kirtan in the temple and alternative days we would go up to his room for darshan. Um, one time we were sitting um, in his room and Prabhupada said, Oh, Saradiya has very nice tilak. Krishna has no tilak. And he went around to each and every devotee, pointing out whether they had tilak or not, which indicated that it was very important to him that we wear tilak. One time um, Guru Das was um, making a videotape of um, the deities and um, the kirtan that was going on and Sri Prabhupada. And Sri Prabhupada indicated to Gurudas that um, he should take um, a videotape of um, me and my friend, Ali Krishna. We were both wearing um, nylon saris that were matching. Hers was pink and mine was green. And so we were dancing together in step. And Prabhupada indicated that he should um, shoot us for the video. So that was... Um, that was um, very uh, kind of him to notice us. Sri Prabhupada treated me um, like his daughter. I joined the temple with my brother Krishnadas, and we were both the youngest devotees there. So he treated me like his daughter. Sometimes he would ask me or tell me certain things that showed that he was concerned about me. Um, for instance, he told the brahmacharis to tell me um, to finish high school, um, to not have any boyfriends, that um, when I finished high school, he would get me married. Um, on a walk, he um, told me, he asked me once, you know, very concerned about, you know, how I was feeling, and he said, um, are you sufficiently covered? So, it was the... It was these little things that Prabhupada said to me that um, strengthened my connection with him. I, I wasn't so um, actually interested in the philosophy a whole lot. I liked the chanting, but it, Prabhupada's personal, um, personal interest in me that encouraged me. And actually, for many years, that kept me... Um, enlivened to continue devotional service. I remember one time I asked Prabhupada a question, <clears throat> are there senses in the spiritual world? And Prabhupada looked at the audience and he said, look at this little girl, she wants to go back to Godhead. And in the course of the answer, Prabhupada said, one day Krishna may kiss you. And at that, the, uh, everyone in the audience laughed. By Krishna uh, and I were the first devotees to go down to Trinidad. 
And um, so that's, at that time, pra practically pr the only association we had was Srila Prabhupada. So, um, you know, we'd write him letters and tell him of our progress. We would send him newspaper clippings, you know, to tell him what we were doing. And he was very, very pleased, extremely pleased at um, our preaching endeavors. In fact, the first day we were there, um, we ended up on the, in the newspaper, the very first day we arrived. So we, we kept very close contact with Prabhupada. Um, and Prabhupada indicated that by using, um, our, by using our married life to preach Krishna consciousness, that in this very lifetime we would go back to Godhead. One time I was in a car with Shiva Prabhupada going to an engagement, and Giri Raj was driving. He had just become a devotee. And um, they were we were going to a college engagement, and they didn't know where it was, but I, I happened to know because I was living there for some time. So I said, we'll just go down this street and turn the corner, and I knew how to get there. The Prabhupada said, oh, sorry, dear. She knows everything. The Prabhupada was very encouraging you know, to the women. Um, you know, I always picked up that he treated us equally. Um, and Sri Prabhupada came to <clears throat> New York in 1968. Um, he had just come from Montreal, and it was Radharani's appearance day. He came into the temple and fell under the office line. And the first thing he said was, I want to thank Srimata Jadarani for the beautiful painting she did of Radha and Krishna. And this is a big painting of Radha and Krishna and the eight gopis that was in the Montreal temple. And he said, I want you to train all the Brahmacharinis to paint. Then he said, he said, you should look at these women as goddesses of fortune and not as your objects of enjoyment. So, I thought that was very nice. <clears throat> Around um, August of 1968, um, I went with the devotees, Malati, Shamasindar, Mukunda, Janaki, Gurudas, and Jamuna. They were going to um, Montreal uh, to see Shri Prabhupada. They were going to go on to London to start the temple, and I was going to go on to Boston to join Jadavani and paint. So, um, in Montreal, Shiva Prabhupada gave them instructions um, what he wanted them to do with Sankirtan, how to perform the Kirtan, like that. Um, at that time, I met my future husband, my Kuntana. I am, um, uh, being very young, I was 17 years old, and I was very confused at that time. So, I wanted to speak to Shiva Prabhupada about this. <clears throat> so, um, I went into his room in Montreal, and I told him that I was attracted to Vaikuntana, and I assumed that Shiva Prabhupada would preach to me, to, you know, get me out of my maya. And Shiva Prabhupada said, oh, he said, so you want to get married? And I thought, you know, that thought hadn't really occurred to me, but since Shiva Prabhupada suggested it, I said, okay. So then he said, I would speak to him. So Vaikuntana was in New York at the time, uh, very briefly, and then he came back to Montreal, and Prabhupada called him into his room and uh, asked him if he would like to get married to me, and he agreed. So basically, Sri Prabhupada arranged our marriage, and Prabhupada told me that um, after I finished high school, um, when I was 18, he would perform the wedding. In India, he said, girls get married at the age of 12, but in this country, um, you know, wait until they're later. And he said the marriage will be uh, very pomp. You know, he said it would be a very nice wedding. So, um, the next year, 1969, Shiva Prabhupada came to Boston in May, and I had finished high school. I was almost finished high school, and I thought, okay, this is it. And um, so, Prabhupada performed the wedding ceremony. There was me and my Kuntana. Um, Janava and Nanaka Shore, Rukmini and Bardraj. And this is the uh, first time a Vedic wedding had been performed in Boston. So there were some newspaper reporters, in fact, two newspapers, who reported on this occasion. 
and um, Shri Prabhupada performed the wedding ceremony. And um, after the wedding, Prabhupada says to me, So, Saradiya, now you are happy? And then I remember we gave him a plate of pashadam, a lot of pashadam. And Prabhupada was sitting on the Vyasa sign, and he looks down and he says, Since I'm not God, I cannot eat so much, you know, in regard to the pashadam. And, oh, I can't forget, I can't, I must miss, m not uh, avoid this. During the fire sacrifice, Prabhupada was talking about how the woman should be covered from head to toe. Even the son should not see her. And he said, and they should not wear mini skirts. And everyone laughed. <clears throat> and I knew that was for me, because when I first became a devotee, I used to come to the temple in mini skirts. And so the next morning, um, we got to go on a walk with Prabhupada, you know, just me and Prakutanath and maybe one other devotee. And Prabhupada said to me, so you are no longer Miss Saradiya, now you are Mrs. Saradiya. So that was very sweet of him. Prabhupada came from London and he was talking about um, the beautiful deity worship in London. And this is in Boston of 1969. So then he looked back behind, and he looked at the big Jagannath deity. And he said, who had made these nice deity clothes? And someone said, Saradiya. So Prabhupada said, thank you very much. And then he threw back his head, and he started laughing. Is Saradiya still fighting with her husband? And everyone laughed. And he said, don't fight with your husband. He's a good boy. Anyone who comes to Christian consciousness is good. And. Um, <clears throat> I should also mention that the temple was jam-packed. must have been over a hundred devotees at the time. So, needless to say, I was embarrassed, but also pleased to be noticed by Shri Prabhupada. Um, one time I was in Prabhupada's room with Rukmini and, uh, for a darshan, and Prabhupada said something like to us, um, the cloth, may be cheap, but it should be clean. So he was talking about our clothes, our saris. I mean, Prabhupada noticed everything. At the airport one time, um, Prabhupada uh, was talking to various devotees, and he said, Brahmananda, you are always in Brahman. Actually, he said, Brahmananda, you are in Brahman? And then he said to Arundhati, and this is before Arundhati got married to Prajumna, who was the Pandit. And he said, Arundhati, the wife of the great sage. Then he said to Nandini, and he said to Balai, who had a little girl named Nandini, he said, she is chanting Hare Krishna. He's asking about the little girl Nandini. She's chanting Hare Krishna. And Balai said, no. And Prabhupada said, oh, she is sucking Hare Krishna. In Vindavan, 1972, October, um, I finally got a chance to see Shri Prabhupada. I hadn't seen him for three years because I always kept missing him. When I was down in Trinidad, he was in India. When I went to New York, he had just left New York. When I went to India, he had just left India. So finally, at this time, I got to see him. I remember him walking down the street in Vrindavan and thinking, of course I know that Shri Prabhupada is not different than his picture or his personal form, but I do remember thinking, it's so nice to see him. And um, we had a big reception at the Radha Damodar temple, and Prabhupada said, <clears throat> this reception, he said, it is not for me. It is for my foreign boys and girls. And he um, was encouraging us this way. He said, um, these young boys and girls are helping me. Then he said, <clears throat> sorry, dear. He said, she is helping me. And then he said, where's your husband? And I said, he's right here, Shri Prabhupada. And he said, why are you so skinny? I said, well, he just got out of a jaunta. And then Shri Prabhupada said, 
what he should do to help his jantas. Take some rock candy and put it in a glass of water and the first thing in the morning drink it and to boil green papaya. But when when he kind of singled me out in this way, after not seeing him for a few years, I knew that he was very pleased by our preaching work. I remember in San Francisco trying to please him by buying him some cloth. I remember trying to buy him a dhoti. I remember knitting him a pair of slippers. And I remember buying him a manga. And in each case, he was not pleased with the gift I offered. So I knew that my offering was preaching. Choose.